behind me is Kailescu Bridge. It was opened by the Queen herself in 1984, but it's better known to us as probably the most famous point on the North Coast 500, that amazing driving loop around the north of Scotland. So you're probably wondering what I have bought up here, what exotic wedge lurks just out of sight. Better come and have a look. Yeah, a Land Rover Defender 90, a D250 diesel no less. Look, I've worn Land Rover racing boots as well. Now we've done plenty of good stuff in this. We've had it for a few months, it's on loan from Land Rover. We've done about 8,000 miles on it and plenty of good stuff. But this time we have excelled ourselves. Although maybe that doesn't have quite so much to do with the car. Top Gear, I think it's fair to say, has had an uneasy history with caravans. But recently, in the spirit of reconciliation, we have tried to get back on track. A couple of years ago, we did some stuff with an Airstream, and that was pretty cool, actually. But now, as they like to say on crummy TV shows, we are taking it to the next level. Ta-da! Ooh, careful with my tea. And this is a Bruder EXP6, and it is awesome. Now, come closer, because I need to show you this. Today is the 21st of June. Does that mean anything to you? tell you it's the longest day of the year so my excessively extravagant plan for this was to take it to watch sunset on the longest day of the year at the place on the British mainland where it sets last you can see the irony of this <laughs> given the weather however for most people Kailescu is the end for us it's just the beginning let's roll so the plan is to go to Cape Roth which is the most northwesterly point on the mainland British Isles. And sunset there tonight is, well, it's after 10.30. It's like 10.31, 10.32. But you can't get there by car because no road goes there. However, there is a ferry and there is then a road on the other side that takes you 12 miles across a military range to the Cape itself. But while I'm on my way, I didn't just magically appear in the Highlands at Kailescu. It's taken me the best part of two days to get up here and had a mega journey. The weather has been fantastic all the way up until I got to Kailescu last night. The scenery is spectacular and you don't feel compelled to drive fast because you can't, because you're a big, massive mammoth rig. You can't just hair ass through, so you just, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And this thing has been really good to do distance in. The only thing, and I don't know if you'll pick it up on the camera, is that with the big trailer on the back, you get a bit of pogoing. I don't think you'd get it if this was a Defender 110 rather than a 90. But the 90, because it's a short wheelbase and the trailer's very long, it just gets a little bit of sort of fore-aft rocking when you go over undulations and bumps and stuff. But the rest of the time, I mean, I sit here in perfect comfort. This seat, I have not once had a twinge or anything from the back, and I've now done 730 miles in it. And it's just such a commanding position to be sat in. So besides the tail wagging the dog a bit with the trailer and the Defender, the only other issue we had was on the way up, and it hasn't repeated itself, but literally 25 miles south of T-Bay, I suddenly got an, a red warning triangle on the dash and one of those signs that says, possible to continue journey, but with reduced power. So what it meant was I started losing power and on the inclines, just coming in and around the Lake District, I was dropping momentum. It was, it was, it was a bit scary. I was like down to 40 mile an hour on the hard shoulder where the trucks were coming past. But luckily I managed to stop, pull over at a services, turn it off for 10 minutes, turn it back on and it was fine. But it did then repeat itself the next day. I didn't get the red warning light, but I definitely had reduced power for about 10 minutes. But again, stopped, restarted, and it was okay. But this is a Land Rover, and I hate to say it, but reliability is not their strongest suit. There have been a couple of other niggles we've had with this car while we've run it, and it just sort of undermines your confidence. To get across to the Cape, you have to cross the mile-wide Kyle of Durness. I'd arranged a ferry to take us across, but the ferryman was like knocked sideways by COVID, so put me in touch with the military who run the Cape Roth firing range. We met them at Keeldale, where I demoed the Bruder's amazing manoeuvrability 
by reversing down the slipway in readiness for loading. So that is the military guys on their way over to Cape Roth now. And as you can see, we're not going to get that on that boat. Arse. They do have a barge, which they would normally use to get stuff across. They think it would take that on it, but the boat that pushes the barge is currently in dry dock being repaired. So that's the military on their way over to Cape Roth. We are not getting across to Cape Roth. So that whole thing about getting to the most northwesterly tip of the UK for the da 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 da. Plan B is needed now. So the drive up here was an adventure in itself, but getting up here, I mean, the scenery is just gobsmacking. You look over there and you've just got low level cloud and these amazing rock formations. And I know it would be better from our point of view if the sun was out and it was glorious, but somehow this sort of damper, wetter, cloudier weather really suits this scenery. So I want to talk to you about the spec of this Defender and why we have it like we do. So I wanted it to be an adventure truck. I wanted to be able to go and people to use it and take stuff and do things with it, which they have, and it's been brilliant for that. But the main reason I wanted it like that is because it is then the antithesis of all those Defender 110s you see out there on big alloys, blacked out, just doing urban stuff and school runs and things like that. Because in my head, that is the job for the Discovery, not the Defender. But I completely understand people's reasoning for buying a Defender to do that, because it's just a cooler thing than a Discovery. And it's got all the seats and it's got more capability, not that you're ever going to use it. But what does that mean for Discovery sales? What are they doing at the moment? Because in my head, all that the Defender is doing is cannibalising sales from the Discovery. Right, let's go and have a walk around the rig, shall we? We're going to start with the Defender because this is, as I said, is our long term and so it's been in the walls a bit. If you look down here, yeah, it went through a massive water splash too quickly, didn't it, Rowan Horn Castle? And the whole, this bit came off, so it got run over, but we put it back on, that's all fine. It's Iger Grey, and this is, is this has got the matte finish, is that paint protection film it's got, which is about 3,000 quid, but it seems to have done the job it needed to so far. This is about a 55,000 quid car. I think it's spec to 77 with all the bits we put on it to make it ready for adventure. So it's got the ladder, the optional ladder, right? But it just feels, it's just not very well engineered. You have to really tug it to make it flip down and stuff. And even the keys that you need to unlock it with are different for this and the box on the other side. So they've obviously all come from different suppliers. A little bit irritating. Anyway, down here, look at this. Look at this lump of chain it's got to hold it on. This is the brake bias adjuster and everything here and the handbrake. But anyway, should we get into the trailer? Because the trailer's just bloody brilliant. So here we go. This is like the forward storage locker, which has got my wellies, paddleboard, wood, everything else I thought we might need for camping that didn't want in the trailer itself is tucked away in there. So next bit is this is this is where you can tell it's an Australian design, right? Open up this hatch and just hook it up and out of the way. Pull this out, look at this. This is your kitchenette. So that's a massive fridge freezer. And then you've got extra storage and stuff. And apparently you can have this all ready to have a barbecue in as well. In one of these drawers though, these are the owner's manuals for the van. I haven't really looked at these very much yet. And I think I know most of what I'm about. That is your water fill there. So 200 litres of fresh water in there to run showers and everything else that you'll see in a second. Then open that up and there's your double access from inside to outside. So you can have this as like an outdoor bar area. And then this is the system that runs all of your onboard systems. There you go. You can see how much fresh water I've got in at the moment. All sorts of stuff. So interior, exterior lights, outdoor lights on the side here. Um, but this is the bit I really like. Look at this. So I can drop, because it's on air suspension, I can drop it all the way down on one side and boost it back up. So you can do all this while you're driving along as well. Anyway, look at the state of the wheels and tires. They are way beefier and chunkier than the ones fitted to the Defender, but the Defenders seem they can cope with everything we've ever put them through. And then the suspension. 
It's just, it looks like it's made of the same stuff as a fourth road bridge. It's so big and strong. Um, it all rides on, it's all adjustable on these big airbags. Each one of those can cope with three tonnes of pressure, apparently, and there's four of them, so that's 12 tonnes. And the caravan only weighs two and a half tonnes, it's 2.2 tonnes, and we've probably put, well, 200 litres of water, so probably at least 300 kilos of stuff on board. But they reckon you can drop this from an altitude and it's absolutely fine. Um, and then there's the material it's made from, which you don't want to rub too hard, actually, because it's really quite brittle. But Bruder started out making trailers for the military. They've done them with thicker skins and thicker wools that are bulletproof. To stop the dust of the Aussie Outback getting inside, they can pressurise the cabin in it. I just think that's amazing. It's complete overkill for use in the UK, though, obviously. So let's pop that back, it's all magnetised on. Right, should we have a look inside? So there's latches here. Just put that back in there for safekeeping. One at one side, one the other, and then one handle slides the whole thing up, locks in place, drop the seat down and open up. But before we open up, look at this. Another little thing it's got. It's got a washing machine. We have literally no excuse for being smelly on our little adventure. Right, inside, you'll have to take your shoes off. So back here, big double bed and I've slept on that for the last two nights and it has been so comfy and I've woken, woken up to amazing views each day which is cracking. Um, anyway here we've got the fridge, look it's actually got stuff in it, fans in here because it's an Australian camper and I'm sure it gets hot, we've also got air conditioning and all that sort of thing. The other thing we've got, let's look over this side, is you've got mosquito nets on all the windows plus you can have it be outside and close the molly nets stop them coming in but when i've been camping in scotland before this mosquito net sometimes isn't small enough for the midges and that gets irritating um, you've also got a proper shield there to cover it up as well and then the whole kitchenette there including your um, induction hob in there. Then down in that bottom drawer lives the flat screen telly. That clips on up there. And I tell you what I've just spotted, which is excellent. I thought this was just a sofa, but it's not. If you lift it up, clip it in, and there's the bunk beds. That is definitely a short straw because that is not exactly a wide platform for sleeping on. But you can sleep four people in here. So later, boys, if your hostel doesn't pan out, you can come and sleep here. A couple more phone calls and Plan B was in place. It did mean missing out on floating across the estuary or doing much off-road. But the military put me in touch with the range commander who agreed to give us access to the firing range control station at Farade Head. But that gave us time for some more exploration. So back on the road with a full tummy. What do you think of the trailer? Well, it's a rhetorical question, obviously, for, for you. but. What I have really enjoyed is people's reactions to it because they just don't know what to make of it. And that's been true everywhere I have been in it. I've driven many supercars that don't get remotely as much attention as this. So as far as economy goes, we've been averaging about 19 to the gallon, but this is a Land Rover trip computer and they usually overread by about eight to 10%. But I don't think that's too bad. Nor in normal driving, this has been doing 27, 28. We've more than doubled the weight, I reckon, and we're down at 90. It's not too bad. Right behind us is Balnakeel Beach, and beyond that, Farad Headland, when you can actually see the military buildings out on top. So we've got permission from the military to get out there, but the beach itself is privately owned and a site of special scientific interest. Now I've used the beach before, but it's become a sort of microcosm of the North Coast 500 in itself. More people come here now, which has put more pressure on the environment, so they're actually trying to discourage visitors. And it's the same with the whole of the North Coast 500. There's a lot of people, a lot of pressure, a lot of cars and a lot of traffic. Anyway, we have come to an arrangement. As long as the trailer stays here, the car can go out. James, I'm going to roll a beer up to you. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted. I'm having a lovely time. I've got an alcohol-free beer. I've got my marshmallows. I've got wood, fire, view, Cape Roth. 
I don't want to be anywhere else in the world on a night like this. Cape Roth is 12 miles over there. Okay, we didn't make it out there, but I reckon we've probably got a better spot here kicking back amongst the sand dunes. Adventures are often better when they don't go as planned. But what about sunset? Longest day of the year in Britain, and we've got the same weather as every other day. 